Let's talk about how we can use the fact that two triangles are congruent to each other to prove other things about those triangles. Because if two triangles are congruent to each other, then all of their pairs of corresponding parts are congruent to each other. All of their pairs of corresponding angles and all of their pairs of corresponding sides would have to be congruent. Now keep in mind when we prove that two triangles are congruent to each other, we almost always are using side angle side or angle angle side or HL, something like that, that we only proved some of the stuff on those two triangles were congruent, not all of the stuff. Every pair of triangles has three pairs of congruent sides and three pairs of congruent angles, and to prove using side angle side or angle side angle or any of those, you only need to prove three out of the six things. So what this thing is saying, this corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, which we abbreviate as CPCTC, because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent is just way too long of a name for something. We can use CPCTC to say that if I knew that the two triangles were congruent, then all of the other things that I didn't have to say were congruent in order to prove that the triangles are congruent, those things have to be congruent too. In other words, if I knew that triangle ABC was congruent to triangle DEF, I know all six of the things that you see listed there. All three of their pairs of sides are congruent, and all three of their pairs of angles are congruent. But typically when we're doing this kind of a problem, we know some of the things are congruent already. Like in this diagram, we know that angle QRP is congruent to angle SRP, and that angle QPR is congruent to angle SPR. And we also see that PR is congruent to PR. So I could prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other using angle side angle. I have a pair of angles, a pair of sides, and another pair of angles, so that's ASA. Remember that to write a congruent statement, you can call the first triangle whatever you want to, name the three vertices of that triangle in any order you want, but the vertices of the second triangle's name has to go in the same order. So if I call the first triangle the yellow triangle on top, triangle PQR, I would have to call the green triangle, the one on the bottom, triangle PSR, because that goes in a corresponding order. If I call the first one PQR, that's two markings on an angle, no markings on an angle, and then one marking on an angle. That's the order I went in for the first triangle's name, so I have to go in the same order for the second triangle's name. So I go two markings, no markings, one marking, that would be PSR. So everything that we've done so far on this problem is what you already knew how to do from the previous lesson. But what we're learning today is that since I have now proven that those two triangles are congruent to each other, I can say that all their other pairs of corresponding parts are also congruent. For example, these two sides are corresponding. I could say that PQ is congruent to PS. They're the first two letters of the first triangle's name and the first two letters of the second triangle's name. They're also just corresponding parts on the triangles. Likewise, I could say that these two sides are congruent to each other. QR is congruent to SR. They're the last two letters, and also they're just corresponding parts. So I could say that QR is congruent to SR. And the last thing would be that angle Q is congruent to angle S. They're both the middle letter in each triangle's name, and they're corresponding parts on the diagram, so angle Q would have to be congruent to angle S. What about our next example? Can we prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other based on the information on this diagram? Well, yeah, because they have two pairs of corresponding sides that are congruent, and their included angles are congruent as well. So I could use side angle side to say that the two triangles are congruent. If I decide to call the first triangle, the yellow one, triangle YVW, I have to call the other triangle ZXW. That way it goes in a corresponding order. Y is the vertex across from the double marked side, and V is the angle that's across from the single marked side. And then W is the angle that has a congruence mark, so I have to go in the same order when I name the other triangle. Z is across from the double marked side, X is across from the single marked side, and W again is the angle that has a congruence mark, so I would have to call it ZXW. So now that I've proven that these two triangles are congruent to each other, I can state that all of their pairs of corresponding parts are congruent as well. For example, these two sides must be congruent because they're corresponding, so YV is congruent to ZX. You can also say that these two angles are congruent to each other. Angle V is congruent to angle X, and that these two angles are congruent to each other. Angle Y is congruent to angle Z. What about our next example? Can I prove that these two triangles are congruent? Well, yeah, since they're right triangles, whose hypotenuses are congruent, 
and who share a leg, those legs have to be congruent, I can use HL to say that triangle EHF is congruent to triangle GHF. Again, I have to go in a corresponding order. EHF is the same order as GHF. And then I can state all of their pairs of corresponding parts. For example, EF is congruent to FG, angle E is congruent to angle G, and angle EHF is congruent to angle GHF. And technically speaking, there is one more thing I would have to say is congruent because all I knew about these two angles is that they were right, but now I could also say that they're congruent to each other because of CPCTC. Or I could have also said that because of the right angles congruence theorem. No matter which way you slice it though, since these are two congruent triangles, all of their pairs of corresponding parts are congruent. So let's use this concept to write some proofs. We have a rather lengthy given statement. AB is congruent to ED, BD is the segment bisector of AE, and AE is the segment bisector of BD. Oh my gosh, so much information. So let's label what we can. Actually, the only thing that I can label is that AB is congruent to ED. The other parts of my given, the segment bisector parts, are what's going to lead me to the next step in my proof. Remember that segment bisectors cut segments into two congruent segments. So if BD is a segment bisector of AE, then it cut AE into two congruent segments. And likewise, if AE is the segment bisector of BD, then it must have cut that one into two congruent segments. And that's just the definition of segment bisector. So I can now label these two segments as congruent and these two segments as congruent. And now I see that these two triangles have all three pairs of sides marked as congruent. So that means that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC because of the side 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 triangle congruence theorem. So what we've done so far should feel a lot like what we did in the previous lesson. We were given some information about two triangles. We proved some other information about those two triangles and proved that the triangles were congruent. But today we're taking it one step further, and we're saying that since the triangles are congruent, tell me something else about them as well. In this case, angle A and angle E, those are corresponding angles in these two triangles. They're both the first letters in each triangle's name, and they're also just corresponding parts when you're analyzing the diagram. So I can say that angle A is congruent to angle E, and that's because of CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Let's try another one. This is really a classic proof. We did one just like it in the previous lesson. We're going to just kick it up a notch in today's lesson and go beyond just showing that those two triangles are congruent and instead say that since the triangles are congruent, we must know that these other segments, AB and DC, must be congruent. What we're given is just some parallel lines. I'm given that AB is parallel to DC and that AD is parallel to BC. Remember that anytime you have parallel lines, you should be looking for corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, or consecutive interior angles. And in this case, I see some alternate interior angles. Angle ABD has to be congruent to angle CDB, and angle ADB has to be congruent to angle CBD. And that's because of the alternate interior angles theorem. So now I see that those two triangles have two pairs of corresponding angles that are congruent. And I also see that they share a side. They both have side DB as one of their three sides. And I can say that DB is congruent to DB because of the reflexive property. So now I have enough information to say that the two triangles are congruent to each other because of the angle side angle triangle congruence theorem. So since those two triangles are congruent, I know that all of their pairs of corresponding parts are congruent. Are AB and DC corresponding parts? Well, yeah, AB are the first and last letters, D and C are the first and last letters. So yeah, I can say that AB is congruent to DC because of the CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. For our next proof, we're told that AD is congruent to DC and that AC is perpendicular to BD. Remember that perpendicular lines create right angles. So since AC is perpendicular to BD, I can say that angle ABD and angle CBD are right angles because of the definition of perpendicular lines. I also see that these two triangles have a pair of sides in common. They share side DB, so I can say that DB is congruent to DB by the reflexive property of congruence. Now I have enough information to say that those two triangles are congruent because of HL. These two triangles are both right triangles. Their hypotenuses are marked as congruent, and they have a pair of legs that are congruent. So by HL, the two triangles are congruent.
But what we're actually trying to show this time is that B is the midpoint of AC. Well, in order for a point to be a midpoint of a segment, it must have divided a segment into two congruent segments. Do I know that AB and BC are congruent to each other? Yeah, I sure do, because those are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. A and B are the first and last letters, and B and C are the first and last letters. Those are corresponding sides of two congruent triangles, so those sides must be congruent by CPCTC. And since these two sides are congruent to each other, B must be the midpoint of AC because of the definition of midpoint. For our next example, our given actually gives us congruent triangles. We don't even have to bother with proving congruent triangles this time, it's just outright given to us. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle AED. So these two triangles that I just shaded in yellow, they're congruent to each other. And I'm going to try to prove that angle ACD and angle ADC are congruent. But that's these two angles in this white triangle in the center. Those aren't angles in the yellow triangles that I know are congruent. So how could I do this? Well, if I knew that this white triangle was isosceles, the two angles that I'm being asked to prove are the base angles of what appears to be an isosceles triangle. Do I have enough information based on my given to say that it's an isosceles triangle? Do I know that AC and AD are congruent to each other? Yeah, I do, because they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So since these two sides are congruent to each other, these two angles must be congruent to each other, and that's because of the base angles theorem. And on our next example, we're given two triangles are congruent, and we're also going to try to prove that two other triangles are congruent. The triangles that we were told in the given are congruent, I outlined in purple and blue. Those are the two triangles that I already know are congruent to each other. And the triangles I'm going to try to prove are congruent are these two that I just filled in with yellow and pink. So the first thing I should do is identify which pairs of sides or angles all of those triangles share. For example, the purple triangle and the yellow triangle have this side in common, and same with the blue triangle and the pink triangle. They both share this side. DC is one of the sides of triangle EDC, and it's one of the sides of triangle ADC. Likewise, side BC is one of the sides of triangle ABC, and it's also one of the sides of triangle EBC. Do you see any other corresponding parts? Yeah, what about these two angles? These angles are angles in both the yellow and the purple triangles, and the pink and the blue triangles. So that's what I'm going to start with on statement number two, is that BC is congruent to DC, and that angle BCE is congruent to angle DCE, because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Well, that's really all I need the purple and the blue triangles for. I really just need to focus on the yellow and the pink triangles. So I'm going to erase part of my diagram. I see that they have one pair of corresponding sides that are congruent and one pair of corresponding angles that are congruent. So I need either another pair of angles or another pair of sides to be congruent. And those two triangles share side EC. EC has to be congruent to EC because of the reflexive property. So now I can say that those two triangles are congruent using side angle side. And for our last proof, we're told that angle BAD is congruent to angle ABE, and that side AD is congruent to side BE. And we're supposed to prove that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle BCE. But we were told two angles that aren't actually part of those two triangles. They exist partially in those triangles, but also extend beyond them. These angles are actually part of each of these triangles. If I break my diagram up, and you've seen me do this before, I strongly recommend that you do something like this when you have diagrams that have triangles that overlap each other. It can really help you to identify what's congruent to what and what you need in order to prove the triangles are congruent. So this angle and this angle that I was told in my given are congruent, they're part of this triangle, which is this triangle right here in that diagram, and this triangle, triangle ABE. That's this triangle right here in that diagram. And I was also told that these sides were congruent. So now I see that in these two triangles, I've almost proven that they're congruent because they have one pair of corresponding sides are congruent and one pair of corresponding angles are congruent. And I also noticed that they share a side. They both have side AB in common. So I can say that AB is congruent to AB because of the reflexive property. So now I see that those two triangles must be congruent to each other because of side angle side.
but don't lose sight of what it is that we're trying to do. It might feel like you've got a victory here because you proved that two triangles are congruent, but that's not the two triangles we were asked to prove are congruent. I need to prove that this one is congruent to this one. Are there any parts of the triangles that we just proved are congruent to each other that are shared by the two triangles that we're going to end up proving are congruent to each other? Well, yeah, what about angle D and angle E? Those are corresponding parts of these two triangles that we know are congruent, and they're angles in the two triangles that we're trying to prove are congruent. So I can say that angle D is congruent to angle E because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And really that's all that we needed these two triangles for was to get us an extra pair of congruent angles. So let's go ahead and forget about those. And also we really don't need these markings anymore. They're not very helpful to figure out these two pink triangles. So now that I've kind of cleaned up my diagram a little bit, it allows me to focus on the two triangles that I actually need to show are congruent. I have one pair of congruent angles and one pair of congruent sides. So I need something else, another pair of congruent sides or another pair of congruent angles in order to prove that these two triangles are congruent. And I see vertical angles. Angle ACD and angle BCE are vertical, which means they must be congruent to each other. So now I can say that those two triangles are congruent because of angle angle side. And that's all you need to know about using corresponding parts of congruent triangles being congruent to prove other things about congruent triangles. And actually that wraps up everything that you need to know about proving that triangles are congruent. In our next unit we're going to be moving on to proving that things are similar to each other instead of being congruent.